What's going on? If you're old, like me, um, you may remember this video game. So, you want to play the game? My game, by my rules, I am the gatekeeper! Well, it wasn't really a video game, was it? It was a board game that you would play with your friends, <clears throat> and then you would put in a VHS tape. <laughs> a VHS tape! I'm so old. You'd put in a VHS tape that would run down a timer, and once in a while a guy would stop you, and then give you different things to do in the game. It was called Nightmare the Board Game, and it looked like this. I release you from the black hole in time for a game of my choosing. Right? Um, there was a lot to love about it. I made my friends play it with me. Um, what I didn't know until I looked at the original Nightmare Game video um, on YouTube about a couple of months ago was that there were multiple versions of this game. They kept putting them out. I never knew that, but um, one thing I did notice is some of the games they would have you play or some of the modifications to what you were doing um, when the host would come on the screen were really complicated. Like, listen to this. Let's dance! If you're on a gravestone, mark time. Move forward six spaces. If you're on a fate, move back two. If you're on a chance, miss a turn. And if you're on an X, hey kid, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hit the hole! Um, in any case, I was showing these to my kids, and all of us came up with this idea. Wouldn't it be cool to do sort of a updated version of the game that people could play through YouTube? That way nobody would have to buy anything, but therein lies the problem, right? Um, how could we distribute a board game to everybody? We thought about it, and then I realized, instead of doing that, why don't we play, um, have people play, not with a board game, but with something easy that anybody can acquire, like a deck of cards. So to play our version of Nightmare, the board game, um, or the YouTube game, I guess, you need a deck of cards. You also need something in the game, and it was a, a convention that I liked. You had to acquire six keys. Um, so in lieu of keys, whenever we say keys, what you need is something that you can have multiples of so you can distribute them. In this case, quarters. Um, but you could really use anything that you want. You could make your own keys. You could make your own tokens or whatever in preparation for the game. You can use anything you want as long as it's easy to understand. Um, to finish off the game, um, uh, I came up with this idea of the receptacle. Um, so it, it could be a hat, it could be a bowl, it could be anything where it's sort of obvious. Because to win the game, ultimately, one, we have you play a couple of uh, games, perhaps, with the receptacle. Um, and the only rule is all the players, wherever they choose to sit or whatever to observe and play the game, um, they have to be able to see it because they need access to it. So you could put this thing really far away, which would make finishing the game a little harder, or you could put it closer with the knowledge that you might be making it too easy for one of your opponents to win the game. But I like to have that kind of randomizer element. Um, so how do you win the game? You play war with the cards right? Um, how do you play war? That's going to be in this next part of the video. Um, you also need something to write down everybody's name. Who Every time you win a game, you mark it. Every time you lose a game of war, and you lose your game of war by losing all of your cards. And once somebody loses all of their cards, 
You determine who the winner was by the person who finished them off that round. Um, you mark down who won. You mark down who lost. And then the, another element I thought that makes this game really fun and lets people individualize it is the idea of punishments. What could the punishment be? This is no, my legal disclaimer that, hey, you're going to do what you're going to do. Um, if you're a grown-up, maybe that punishment is take a shot of something. Um, if, you're, if you've got people who are under legal drinking age, you can take a shot of anything. Something that maybe that doesn't taste good, for example. Um, my kids had the idea of, they had these like Harry Potter jelly beans where some of them tasted good and some of them tasted bad and you didn't know which was which. So a punishment could be have to eat one of those beans. Um, you could have a truth or dare thing that you could do really fast and a bunch of slips of paper with truths or dares that you have to do if you draw this. Um, whatever the punishment is, um, everybody has to agree upon it beforehand. And then that way, whenever we say you are punished, boom, you just go and do it. <clears throat> In any case, if you can acquire six of the tokens through beating people in war, and you're just playing constantly and playing quickly. Um, what if somebody doesn't play quickly? What if somebody's deliberately going slowly, for example? Well, then the other players in the group can just determine and punish them. I want to keep this thing more open-ended, so there aren't hard and fast rules about necessarily everything. And then once we pop up on the screen, you do have to stop playing, listen to what we're saying, um, and then act accordingly but if you can acquire six tokens then you can take whatever cards you have and try to but you have to stay where you've always stayed in the game and you can fling it and if you can get one of the cards boop, to land inside one of the receptacles you can stop the video and you win the game what happens if you don't what happens if nobody can acquire six of the keys and then get a card in the uh, receptacles. Mm. Then you'll see the end of the game. And basically you'll all die in game terms. Anyway, here's a brief tutorial on <coughs> how to play war. And how to settle certain disputes that could come up in the course of playing war. But I'm sure we didn't cover everything. So you'll, you can figure it out based on the rules. The whole goal, remember, is to start this game. Have fun and do your thing. Anyway, here's the brief instructions on how to play war and the game itself. Remember, once you get those six keys, though, um, you're going to fling cards um, until you can get it to land in the receptacle. And then you can win Nightmare, the board slash YouTube game. Enjoy, and I'm hoping to get this out before Halloween. So if I do, happy Halloween. And if you play at a different time of the year, because this thing will just stay up forever, um, happy Halloween every day. That made no sense whatsoever. Hey, welcome. All right, now we've got multiplayer, right? So the first thing we do, we write down everybody's name and then have a category for number of wins, number of losses, and the number of times that you get punished. These will factor into the game, and they're just interesting statistics to have if you play the game more than once. You can set your own kind of personal records, that kind of thing. Okay, so we have three players or more. Each round of war, everybody will flip over the card. Whoever's got the largest card wins, and then they win those cards. Put them in the discard pile. We go to this next round, ace. Ace is the highest, so this person wins the cards and puts them in the discard pile. And in this one, the other person wins with the highest card and they get cards in their discard pile. Okay, now some scenarios that might come up. All right, we do have a tie here with the kings, but the ace is the highest. So the highest card always wins. But let's say they didn't have an ace. Let's say they had a lower card than the kings. Then the kings engage in war. You mark down the number of times that you've fought a war. In this case, one. You put one card face down, and then you flip. 
Queen is the highest, so they get to take all the cards. Does that make sense? Yeah. As you can see, as the game wears on and you have more and more wars, meaning the same cards come up, like in this case, right? We have kings. But now we have all three the same, which will happen. This is the second time a war has come up, so we mark two. And now two cards go face down for everybody involved in the war that has the same card as the other people. Then we flip, flip, flip. Which one's the highest? That one in the middle there is a seven, a four and a two. Seven is obviously the highest, so they win all the cards, right? Let's say they had an ace. Remember, twos beat aces, right? And that's true, but that four is higher than the two. So in this case, I would personally award it to the person with the four. But you can figure out that any way that you want. But if you want a hard and fast rule, that's the way I would say it. The twos do indeed beat aces, but then becomes the de facto top card. And so if anybody has anything higher than the two, then they win. All right. This person has reached the end. So we shuffle their discard pile. And now they keep on playing. Ace is the highest. They get their card. They win the cards. And so on and so forth, right? These two have the tie again. So we mark three for the amount of wars that we've had. And we put three cards face down. Again, you can imagine a scenario where if you keep playing this thing for close to an hour, it's going to reach the point where every time people have a tie, um, it's going to be incredibly high stakes. That way, a lot more people are running out of cards. Ace beats a three. So they take all the cards. Um, so that way, a lot more people are running out of cards more quickly and a lot more keys are getting awarded and all of that kind of stuff. These people have run. Let's say that person runs out of cards completely. Then you mark a loss for them, a win for the person who ended up taking the last of their cards. And the person who ended up taking the last of their cards gets awarded a key. In this case, I'm using quarters as the keys. So they get a key. And that's what you're trying to do. You will get keys awarded throughout the game. You also get punished as you play the game. But the main ways that you're going to acquire keys is through these games of war. Now, what are you trying to do ultimately in this version of Nightmare, the board game, quote unquote? Here's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get not just one, but six keys, just like in the original games. If you get six keys, then the game becomes a very different thing. Thumbs up, right? Then you're taking your cards that you've won <laughs> through war, which are now out of circulation, and you're going to try to throw them into the hats or the receptacles that you have around the room. If you can do that before time runs out, then you win the game and you'll stop the video and you'll save everybody. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Enjoy the game.